This is Chow Kit, located in central Kuala Lumpur. It is known by locals as the sleepy section of downtown KL. The area, famous for both good and bad reasons, was named after a Penang-born tycoon and public official, Lok Chow Kit. Kuala Lumpur, seat of Malaya's central administration, is a well-run, modern, clean city with people from every nation in the east. A bustling commercial district, Chowkit used to be considered the city center of KL. This place was such an iconic part of the city that it inspired a song by Sudirman Arshad, which he performed at a free concert right there on site in 1986. Due to tin mining in the early 1820s, settlements are seen developing along the rivers, which perhaps acted as their main transportation route at the time. Infrastructure, institutions, and government offices were built massively during the British colonization in 1913 to 1957, thus the rise in population at the center of Chow Kit. As of today, certain old buildings were repurposed into corporate and commercial buildings to accommodate the growing working community. The main roads act as dividers, forming a gridded layout. The site is located at an intersection along two main roads, Jalan Sultan Ismail and Jalan Tuanku Abdul Rahman. Buildings on the north are more linearly arranged along the main roads, whereas the south buildings are scattered and irregularly arranged. A wide number of pocket spaces can be seen. However, most of these areas are used as parking spots. Fine-grained patterns can be seen at the northern area and coarse grain patterns at the south, showing larger building footprints of medium to high-rise commercials and offices. Our site is located at the southern part of Chowkit, surrounded by corporate and office buildings. Northern of Chowkit is more lively and active, but more prone to danger and insecurities compared to the southern district. Gombak River and Klang River act as geographical edge splits. Jalan Sultan Ismail, Jalan Tuan Abdul Rahman, and Jalan Raja Laut are the main roads that form the hard edges around the site. Gombak River and Klang River separates Chowkit from Bukit Tungku and the Central Business District, respectively. Jalan Sultan Ismail further divides Chowkit into commercial and corporate zones, while Kampung Baru sits on the northern eastern side of Chowkit. Mixed commercial activities like services, retail, and offices are centralized towards our site whereas residentials are mostly found at the northern edges. The site also has convenient access to nearby public transport facilities. Jalan Sultan Ismail and Jalan Tunku Abdul Rahman are the primary paths surrounding the site. Jalan Raja Laut and Jalan Sri Amar are considered secondary paths, and the lorongs behind our site are tertiary paths. Even though our site looks easily accessible, most of the roads are one-way routes, which has proven to be troublesome for those who miss their turns. The site promotes good walkability, provided with sheltered and unsheltered pedestrian walkways. Pedestrians were seen using the sheltered pedestrian bridge more often, passing along our site, leaving it unnoticed. Majority of the population here are Malays and Chinese. Indians, foreign workers, and tourists make up the minority at only 12%. The population near our site range from ages 18 to 50. Heading up along Jalan Sultan Ismail from the Central Business District, this area appears more commercialized with plenty of tourists and leisure events. On the eastern edge of Chowkit, under view of the magnificent skyline of the Central Business District, the crowding together of buildings from a sense of closure, We are guided to another space through the arch under the monorail station. Moving past the monorail station, the sense of closure remains with the construction hoardings on our right. The skyscrapers of Chow Kit come into view, and one can't help not to lay eyes on the JKG Tower. This tower acts as an incident of the other uniform buildings, which dominate the site, deserving attention from people walking past. Once across Jalan Tunku Abdul Rahman, one can feel the openness created by the absence of the monorail track. Once we arrive at our site, we will be looking at an enclosure. This space is defined by these towering buildings and we cannot help not to feel intimidated. This area is mostly occupied by white collar workers and is less happening. This results in our site remaining on the sidelines of social activity. In other words, a wallflower. Moving forward, 
The LRT Railway signals the end of Jalan Sultan Ismail by interrupting the visual continuity down the road. Micro From our point of view, our site can be seen as a wallflower. While its high density of office buildings does attract a high volume of workers, but the lack of commercial and cultural value limits the potential of the site, as the outdoor activity on site revolves around the work and culture and office hours. People tend to overlook our site and just walk past by. With all this opportunity surrounding our site, it's time we take the initiative to exploit the huge potential present at the site and allow people to realize the hidden beauty of this particular wallflower. In front of the site is a rundown shopping center, Maju Junction Shopping Center and also Manara Tabong Haji. Manara Liberty is located on the left of our site. Behind the site is a 12 stories tall parking building, mainly for JKG workers alone. Toon Hotel flanks our site directly on the right. Our proposed site boundary is approximately 1,575 meters squared. Plot ratio is 1 to 8, which means we can have at least a total built up area of 8 times our site area. For every 800 square feet of gross area, there needs to be at least one car parking bay, which means a minimum of 21 bays are required. 8 AM. The site is surrounded by high rise buildings and is mostly shaded in the morning. Therefore, morning outdoor activities are encouraged on site, 11 p.m. till 12 p.m. The period when the site has direct sun exposure and gaining the highest temperature of the day, proposing deep eaves gable roof to help circulate ventilation and provide wider shaded area to site. 3 p.m. Most of the sunlight is blocked by the Liberty Insurance Building, providing partial shading to the site, suggesting less window facing southwest to avoid direct sunlight, causing uncomfortable glaring. Our micro site is a corporate district that lacks social activity in any other aspect. The intersections are jam-packed with cars, motorcycles, and pedestrians during rush hours, but recede again after workers leave. The highly urban environment on site, emphasized by the high density of skyscrapers, shrouding the lack of activity at street level during most times of the day. The skyline of Jalan Sultan Ismail is characterized by tall, modern high-rises surrounded by shorter, smaller scale building typologies, such as schools and pre-war shop houses. Buildings near Jalan Sultan Ismail's corporate district are mostly covered in modern international style facades with steel and glass claddings, which is a stark contrast to the more local and traditional typology of the area. A streetscape of a larger scale and proportion is seen in this area due to the urban setting. The streets within the site are well equipped and maintained with street furniture and wide pedestrian and bicycle paths, but are barely used except during rush hours. The lack of public space despite the large open areas along the streets displays a huge waste of potential. While the skyline is more prominent in our microsite, social nodes and surrounding areas are actually more lively and vibrant throughout the day. People use our site as a transition point to get between the nodes scattered throughout the area. Intersections that have a large setback make for intense contact points as it allows people to concentrate around the area where necessary activities intervene with social activities. While our site has mostly remained on the sidelines of social activity in the area, it does have the potential to be developed into a bustling node like many others that surround it. Shopping malls are major activity nodes and Maju Junction Mall being vacant is a big contributing factor to the low activity on our site especially at night when offices and schools are closed. Traffic density at our micro site is highest during rush hours when workers are arriving or leaving the many office buildings in the area. However, vehicular and pedestrian traffic at the site settle down during normal times, contrary to what's happening at the surrounding nodes, which receives steady flow of traffic around the clock. This is largely because our site is only used for travels between the social contact points during normal hours. White Collar White Collars in the age range of 20 to 40 years old make up the main population around the site. Their preferred mode of transport are public transportations as their traffic conditions are unfortunate. Some of them prefer to drive while some others walk past or through our site to get to their destination. They can be seen during the morning rush hours from 8 to 10 a.m., lunch hours from 12 to 2 p.m., and after hours around 5 to 6 p.m. Students Students are frequently seen around the site as there are few educational institutions around, ranging from primary schools to colleges. Transportation modes of students vary. Some of them take buses and LRTs, while some others travel by car with their parents, either working nearby or from home. Parents Parents can be seen around the site, particularly in the morning 
and after school periods. To avoid the rush hour, parents tend to come earlier to pick up their kids. They're often seen hanging around, waiting outside the school compound. Business tourists. Business tourists usually come from other states or even other countries to meet up for business affairs. Those looking for appropriate spaces to work find it inconvenient as the place lacks the appropriate programs. Business tourists are spotted occasionally, ranging from ages 20 to 40 years old. There is a variety of potential users available on our site. Each user lives their own time zone, a pattern or routine in their own daily life, which we can base our site program on. Working class patrons can use our co-working space as a temporary office or to relax while waiting for the rush hour traffic to clear up. College students from around the area can use our site as a 24-7 study and project space. Using this information to our advantage, we can cater to this newly formed community with programs that run around the clock instead of limiting our site's potential to just during rush hours. As technology and the working community grows, the revolution of collaborative work is introduced. Apart from conventional workspaces, co-working spaces blurs the lines between working hours and personal time. Hence, how does a co-working space adapt to our site?